the Lord, O my soul, and together let us bless his holy name. Hi, I'm Bishop Hewlin Hannah, and welcome to the Word with Bishop Hannah. To those who have celebrated the period of Thanksgiving, again I say to you, Happy Thanksgiving. And to the rest who have not celebrated that day in particular, we have to give God thanks every single day of our lives because there are things that God does for us that we can count and there are many, many things that he also does that we cannot even begin to comprehend, not even to talk about trying to count them. But we bless the Lord for his faithfulness and we thank him today because this is an awesome God that we are serving. Well, today we want to speak on this topic, beauty in confusion, beauty in confusion. And you think about life, think about some of the things we go through as people, think about how God has to help us in times of crises and difficulties, and then we see him come through for us. What a mighty and an awesome God we serve, beauty in confusion. I want to begin by reading Isaiah chapter 61, verses 1 to 3. The Bible says, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of prison to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all that mourn, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the Lord planting, or the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. I want to read that same passage, that is Isaiah 61, verses 1 through 3, from the New Living Testament, the NLT. And here's what it says here, New, New Living Translation, my apology. And it says, The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is upon me, for the Lord has anointed me to bring good news, to comfort the poor. He has sent me to comfort the brokenhearted and to proclaim that captives will be released and prisoners will be freed. He has sent me to tell those who mourn that the time of the Lord's favor has come, and with it the day of the Lord's anger against their enemies. To all who mourn in Israel, he will give a crown of beauty for ashes, a joyous blessing instead of mourning, festive praise instead of despair. In their righteousness, they will be like great oaks that the Lord has planted for his own glory. This passage, though prophetic at the time, demonstrates that God will not forget his people. For those who are aware of the infractions of the children of Israel against the laws of God, we are all familiar indeed. We are all too familiar with the fact that they had gotten themselves into this state by their own choosing. But God, in his divine love and commitment to the covenant he made with their forefather had a plan to redeem them from the hands of the enemy. Jesus came for the expressed purpose of bringing us back to God. Can I say that again? Jesus came for the expressed purpose of bringing us back to God. He came so that the tyranny of sin would not destroy us. Our hope is in the message of salvation. This is important and should not be lost on anyone. God, through Jesus Christ, came to this world so that we, who were alienated from him by the ugliness of sin, can have the beauty of salvation in and on our lives. Sin is hideous, and it would eventually destroy those who are deceived by it. I think I need to mention that again. Sin is hideous, and it would eventually destroy those who are deceived by it. Sin is not a mar on a person's character. It is etched in the life of the human being as long as we do not repent. 
It is not a character flaw. It has to be repented of. Even though it can manifest itself in many different ways, sin must be repented of. We don't grow out of sin. Indeed, the longer we stay away from repentance, we become even more entrenched in a life of rebellion and being away from God. But as bad as sin is, it can be, give, it can be forgiven. And its ugly stain on our lives can be removed by the grace of God. There is no one today who is listening to this message. There is no one anywhere who is experiencing the convicting power of the Holy Spirit that is beyond the reach of God. God can reach you regardless to where you are, regardless to who you are, and regardless to your antecedents. God can reach you. Never mind what people say. Never mind how you feel about the egregious acts that you may have committed. God can turn your life around. God can make something new out of you. The children of Israel, at the time of this prof prophecy, were in a bad, bad place. They were in rebellion against God, and they were being oppressed by the enemy. This was the perfect place for the message of redemption. Here are some nuggets that God offered them through the prophet Isaiah. The first thing God offered them was good news. Imagine being bombarded by the enemy and all of a sudden you receive the good news that something good is about to happen to you. And it is something that will happen not at the hand of the enemy, but at the hands of God. Something is about to change the course of things as you knew them. When you get this news, you've been in rebellion from God. You've been fighting against God. And then God shows up in his mercy and in his grace. And he extends to you a hand of love, a hand of reconciliation. This is good news for anyone who has been estranged from God. All of a sudden, when you hear this news, the pain, humiliation, the embarrassment, the ridicule, none of these things mean to you anymore what they meant just a day before you received this news. Our God is a God of hope. Our God is a God who causes us to know that he has a plan for our lives. Regardless to where you are, regardless to what you have sunk to in life, God can bring you back and God can make you new and whole. I'm going to emphasize this throughout this sermon because I want you to appreciate the fact that even though the forces of evil may be against you, even though the enemy may be intimidating you by his behavior, by his threats, by his acts of intimidation, you need to know that despite all of this, there is a God who loves you and there is a God who can step into your confusion and your chaos and can make beauty out of you. The second thing that happened was that the news that Isaiah the prophet brought from God, this news was targeted to bring comfort to those whose hearts were broken and who were being held oppressed by sin and their earthly enemies. There are some habits that are like slave masters. There are some habits that drive us. There are some things that we do that we do not want to do. But God can break them in the name of Jesus Christ. Many people have given up on ever having a better life. Many people have resigned themselves to believing that this is all that can happen for me. And so they spiral from one disastrous situation to another to another. But wait a minute. God wants you to know that he can come in and he can change your sad situation. And God can give you a turnaround. Perhaps I am speaking to a parent right now. Your children, your child, your daughter, your son have not been 
all that you wanted that child to be. They have disappointed you in every turn in the road. You have spent money to educate them. You have tried to keep them from the bad things of life, but yet they've stepped out and they've gone in a way that has created heartache, pain, and embarrassment for you and your family. Wait a minute, mother. Wait a minute, father. Wait a minute, family. God can step in to that situation and God can remove them from the quagmire of sin and God can make them new creations. Do not give up on your family. I know sometimes the anger can be almost seething in you. You want to hold them and shake badness out of them and replace it with goodness, but it doesn't happen like that. Allow God to step in and God can bring beauty out of confusion. Favor, favor for the children of Israel. Favor was coming their way. They were not deserving of it, but God was about to demonstrate his grace and his mercy to his children. There is nothing that God does for us that we deserve. In fact, the only thing we deserve from God is condemnation. But in his grace, in his mercy, in his love toward us, God comes back at us and he reaches out his hand, I'm saying it again, of rest restoration and reconciliation because he wants this relationship with us. The children of Israel were not deserving of it, but God was about to demonstrate his grace and mercy to his children. God was going to create beauty in confusion. Can I say it again? Regardless to where you find yourself, and people put you down, and you start to believe this stuff so much that it's now a part of your psyche. You believe that you cannot be extricated from this deep hole that you find yourself in. But God was going to create for the children of Israel beauty out of confusion or beauty in confusion, and God can do the very same thing for you. This is the message that God wants us to herald in our communities. This is the message that he wants us to promulgate in our families and wherever, he, wherever we find ourselves, to let people know that this God has come to give our lives substance, to give us value, to give us meaning, and to give us purpose. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There are many, even now, who are besieged by the prison walls of life. They have fallen prey to the temptations of the enemy. They have been deceived that walking away from God is better than abiding in his will. But alas, they will discover that the lie of this deception will one day come to torment them. I don't care what is happening in your life that seem to be happy and joyous and that appear to be fulfilling. If God is not at the center of it, its shelf life is not longer or much longer now. I believe that someone watching this program today is undergoing a transformation even right now. And you may say to me, well, Bishop Hannah, I've been in this way in and out in my relationship with God over and over. And I believe that God is tired of me and my insincerity. Hold on, my friend. God is not tired of you. As many times as we can come back to him, and to seek his grace and mercy, God is willing to pull us back into a relationship with him. I want you to be encouraged to know that every time you fall, the grace of God, the power of God, the spirit of God is there to bring you back into a harmonious relationship with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You see, this transformation that God wants to bring to us is something that's going to happen from within. And then it manifests itself on the outside. You cannot change yourself. You cannot be good. You cannot be nothing that is of value without God. Please understand me. I'm not speaking down to you. I'm not speaking against ambition and the industry. What I'm saying is that the problem that man face, faces is on the inside. Until our hearts can be reconciled to God from the inside, all we do are just works of righteousness. 
an ox that will probably look laudable in the eyes of others. But God does not want the works of our lives. What he wants is our hearts. And when God touches and changes our hearts, then he manifests himself in our external behavior, our mannerisms, our behavior, and our conduct. Transformation is happening right now to someone somewhere who is interacting with this word. You can see that God is moving things around. Even now, you can feel it in your spirit. You can sense that he is going to help you and that your life is about to turn around. I don't care. Again, I do not care what anyone has said to you. If God says you are restored, you are restored. If God says that you are a new creation, you are a new creation. And God can save you in the squalor that you find yourself in. He will save you, he will clean you up, and he will move you to where he will have you to be. Even right now where you are, you may be in a place where it's too shameful and embarrassing to even confess where you are right now. But God can bring heaven in the mess you find yourself in right now. God can bring paradise to you, that blissful place where you and God commune as friend with friend, even now in the name of Jesus Christ. God can turn things around for you. And even though things around you may, may not change all at the same time, God is creating in you beauty in the midst of confusion. Let me put it like this. Let's say you're a young person and you're living in a home where you're dependent upon your parents. God can save you in the midst of a home where no one else is saved. Bless your name, Jesus Christ. Thank you. God can keep you in the midst of a state of confusion and chaos. God can keep you. God can, God can so envelop you. God can so cocoon you that the things of this world, the things that you're confronted by where you live, will not even come nigh to you. God can create beauty in confusion. Bless your name, Jesus Christ. God is creating a situation whereby those things that made you cry will no longer bother you in the same way they did before his intervention. And you know, many persons are brokenhearted. Many persons are grappling with deception. Many persons have been betrayed. Many persons have been hurt. People that you loved and you, tr and you trusted, they have, divulged, they have divulged information that you gave them in confidence. Many people are hurting. Many people are broken even right now. But I want to tell you, in the name of Jesus Christ, oh, bless your holy name, the things that made you cry heretofore, God wants to change them. In the name of Jesus Christ, the things that caused you to hang your head in shame, God can eviscerate them in the name of Jesus Christ. God can completely wipe them out. For too long, for too long, my brother, my sister, my friend, for too long, you've allowed your situation to dictate to you. You've been knocked around. You have been humiliated. You've been made to feel like a joke. You have been deemed as a poster child for the failure and uh, for the failure and, and, and broken dreams of life. You have been so categorized. But God wants to change this all. God wants to change this in a nanosecond. Those who have looked at you in the work environment, in your home, in your community, perhaps even in your fellowship at church, those who have looked at you and placed you in a box, those who have placed you in a silo and determined that this is where you will remain, they are about to be disappointed because God has a bigger and a larger vista for you. God has a larger experience for you. And I want you to accept it in the name of Jesus Christ. God is not going to change your circumstances or your environment before he changes you. He's going to change you. And when he changes you, those things around you, the power and the anointing of God will transform them as well. Nothing at this moment seems to be happening for you. But as God spoke over the life and the lives of the children of Israel, 
I wish to remind you of the essence of this message. He has come to bind up the brokenhearted. Whatever life threw your way, whatever life gave you that you couldn't grapple with, God has come to bind up the brokenhearted. God can do it. God will do it. He has come to bind up the brokenhearted. This is to say that the damage from sin, the damage from rebellion, the damage from the enemy's attacks, and the years of feeling as if God was not on your run will come to a definite end. Can I say it again? Bless you, Jesus. When you turn off this, this, this segment of the word with Bishop Hannah, I want you to do so with joy, knowing that you are an overcomer. Knowing that you are an overcomer. When you go back to work the next day, you may have to still go back into a treacherous situation. When you step out of your house, out of your apartment, into your community, you may still step in a den of enemies. But in the midst of this, God will give beauty in confusion. This is good news for all oppressed people. This is the news for all who feel as if the ugliness of life has the upper hand on them. Trust God when he speaks. Trust. Trust God. Those who laughed at your dilemma will one day be gripped by the fact that God can make something beautiful out of every misfit that this world has ever seen. Yes, you are a misfit. Yes, you try to fit in. But no one wants to be around you. But God can change you. And God can reinvent you. And God can place you right back in the same community that expelled you. And God can give you the joy of the Lord. Hallelujah. The Bible says he will give you beauty for ashes. Think about this culturally. At the time of this passage, ashes were worn when there were sad occasions. It signified a period of pain and sympathy, suffering, loss, and sadness. It signified defeat. But God was saying, not only will I give you beauty for ashes, but I will give you salvation. I will give you salvation in my name. Bless you, Jesus. God was saying that the stuff that made you sad and broken was about to change. Indeed, is about to change. Those who knew your sad story will no longer talk about it. They'll no longer reflect on it because they will see a new person. He will give you a new story. He will make you the story. He will make you the testimony of the grace and the goodness of God. The confusion, the confusion that you're experiencing now will turn to glory in the name of Jesus Christ. God will fix it for you. Never mind who is talking badly about you. Never mind who brings up your past. Never mind who is cutting you down and saying when they see you, they start to talk in secret. Never mind that God is making you a beautiful person in the midst of confusion and chaos. I'm talking to someone right now. You're a young person and you've made mistakes. Now you've turned your life to Jesus Christ. And there's a demonic person, indeed a demented person, who is trying to cut you down and trying to make your name like dirt and nothing else. Child of God, lift your head up high and brace about and, and brag about the goodness of God in your life. God is going to put you out there and God is going to show that he can turn situations around and he can make beauty in confusion. Those who created the confusion in your life. They will be around long enough to see God exonerate you. This is also telling me, this passage, that at times God may not move the things that are causing us trouble. He may not move them right away. Instead, he may simply give you a different perspective of what you're going through. He may cause you to wear it as a loose garment. He may cause you 
to thrive in the midst of it. He may choose to use your life as a rebuke to the enemy. Stand still and to see the salvation of the Lord our God. Do not cut and run. Stand in the name of Jesus Christ and to show every demonic person and every force that has come to destroy you that in Christ Jesus you have absolute and complete victory. It may not seem so now. It may not sound so now. Your confidence may not be buoyed by now. But I'm telling you, in the name of Jesus Christ, this God that we serve, who has promised to give us beauty for ashes, this God is in our corner. This God is for us. God is for us. God is for us. I'm going to say it a third time. God is for us. The enemy may seem to be blossoming. The enemy may seem to be having a field day. But God is for us. Whatever may be his will. I know that he will create beauty in you and me in the midst of confusion. Lest we be too hasty. Lest we be too hasty. God had a plan for the enemies of the children of Israel also. Let me tell you this. God has a plan for your enemies. God has a plan for your enemies. Do not run behind your enemies. Do not, do not waste energy and time. Do not give your enemy all of the attention that he or she or they want. Listen to verse, listen to verse 2 of Isaiah 61. He has sent me to tell those who mourn that the time of the Lord's favor has come. And with it, the day of God's anger against their enemies. God is going to fix every enemy that you have. God is going to fix every, everything that rises up against you. God is going to pull down in the name of Jesus Christ. I feel this in my core. At my core, I feel this today. This is remarkable because it tells me that I do not have to be concerned about what will eventually happen to my enemies. I'm going to press my head on my pillow tonight. And I'm going to let God deal with my enemies. I'm going to get up tomorrow morning. I'm going to prepare myself for a day of victory in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm not going to be perturbed or move in one way or the other by my enemies. Plan what you want. Forecast what you want. Prophesy what you want. I am going to stand on the authority of God's word. God has a plan for my enemies. He will visit my enemies. He will vindicate his children. We will know that he is working on our behalf when we see how he will dispose those of those that have afflicted us. I pray that God will touch you deeply and that you will recognize that it's not over until God says it's over. I am choosing to believe the report of the Lord. I am choosing to rebuke Satan in the name of Jesus Christ. I am choosing to walk with the authority and the power that is commensurate with those who know the Lord Jesus Christ. I hope that this is your desire. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, today, Lord, we come before your presence. We thank you for the certainty and the comforting power of your word. We thank you that we can be in a good place with you, even when it appears as if we're in a bad place in our own situations. We bless you now and forever. I pray for that unsaved person, Lord. Cause them to come to know Jesus Christ as Savior. But I pray for the one who's been broken by life's circumstances and the one who feels ugly and disfigured. I pray, God, that you would create beauty in their confusion and you would give them a new lease on life. I thank you now, Father, in Jesus' wonderful and holy name. Amen and amen. Beloved God, bless you, God, keep you. And I pray that this message today will resonate with you to the point where you not only experience victory in your life, but that you will go and share this information, this wonderful news with someone who needs to know it. Until then, I'm Bishop Hewlett A. Hanna, and I hope to see you again on another edition of The Word with Bishop Hanna. God bless you. Walk with